Leaders in France are speaking out against some rising American ideas on race, gender, and post-colonialism after echoes of American culture wars inside French universities are starting to make headlines in the mainstream press there. Amazing. So according to New York Times, French establishment figures and even Emmanuel Macron are now speaking out against American woke identity politics, claiming the ideology itself undermines French society. So journalist Zed Jelani joins us now to discuss this and more. Zed, it's good to see you, man. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, it's good to be here. I knew that you would have a nuanced take here um, on what exactly is happening. It fascinates me because France, I mean, you're going all the way back to De Gaulle and rejecting a lot of, you know, America's ideas around the Pinedo state and more, has always had like a skeptical eye of America and its cultural influence upon them. But now it's manifesting in itself in a way where they're being against identity politics. Can you maybe just contextualize that? Is it hypocritical? Just explain. Well, it is funny, and I think one thing many people pointed out after they read this article is that some of what America is experiencing in terms of ideology actually originates in France, right? Yeah, like, that's uh, true. <laughs> certain postmodern theorists like Foucault right. uh, were French. You know, they had they had their roots and origin in within you know Paris and France. So it is a little bit ironic, but honestly, it's not unexpected because the French do have a different sensibility about a lot of these things. Uh, they don't have, for instance, they don't have the same exact history of racial categorization and classification as the United States. So since the mid to late 20th century, they've outlawed um, the collection of racial da data. So they don't do like a census with race. And it's very unusual in France to ever have anyone really discuss each, each other as like a, a white Frenchman or a black Frenchman or so on and so forth. Um, they've they've tried to create kind of an ethos of national unity, of a national culture, of a uniculture, which obviously has created some problems uh, more recently with religion because they have passed laws that ban uh, religious symbols in their public institutions. And that has really disproportionately impacted um, North African migrants, Middle Eastern migrants, uh, Muslim, Muslim French, French mm -hmm. people, because they tend to be a lot more religious than the other people. So I think you know, they've had these challenges that they've kind of wrestled with within their own context because they're, you know, to, to a lot of them, thinking about people as members of racial groups, think, you know, it conjures up memories of Vichy France under German occupation or of colonialism in Haiti or you know, Algeria. Uh, you know, their response has been primarily to promote a colorblind policy, right? They, they do have policies um, against discrimination. You can report discrimination. They even have hate speech laws. Um, but generally, they distribute resources through either universal policies or by based on income trenches or neighborhoods and things like that. Uh, they don't they don't use any kind of racial data or racial collection. And I think what's happening is that the U.S. context, which tends to use a lot more of all of that stuff, uh, it's globalizing, right? Like there were huge Black Lives Matter protests in France last year, and mm -hmm. I think part of that is just that people watch people people's politics are not necessarily local anymore right like they feel like they're part of a global collective and they feel like the issues are the same and they can relate it to themselves um so i think that the french are seeing a lot of this come out from america and they're saying this is not our context it's not our culture it's not how we deal with issues here and you're seeing you're seeing some kind of a backlash there you also have to remember that in the background of all of this you have le pen and and the front national which has for years tried to get into power in france and never succeeded although they generally do get to like round two of elect. They've frequently gotten to right. round two of presidential elections. So I think Macron also has to put on a strong face and say, you know, be more of a French chauvinist mm -hmm. and resist things like uh, American globalization and and also take a tougher lie on Islamism and all that because he he fears uh, the possible growing power of the right, which is you know, like I said, it's been a reoccurring threat in France. Um, so a lot of things are kind of happening at the same time. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it's, it is kind of funny to see a country that I think emanated a lot of the ideas or a lot of the ideas emanated from that created critical theory and, you know, this, this hyper focus on race come back around and say, no, 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 it's your fault, America. Well, yeah. they, they, they had a role as well. So <laughs> That's true. That somehow seems perfect. Yeah. Um, I think your point about Marine Le Pen is really important because I saw a poll recently that she's at her highest levels of popularity. So this is, you know, at least being perceived as a very significant threat. So help us understand, understand some of the political dividing lines here, because I don't want to make it seem like everyone in French is like, oh, these woke politics are bad. There's a division within French society about how it's being viewed as well. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the young folks in, in France are looking for alternative ways of viewing the world. So I think 
if you just like turn on global social media, you will see that like self identifying yourself with it and clicks of like, you know, I am a X, 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 speaking yes. as a Y, Y, Z, you know, right. like this is, I think this is because a lot of French are, are alienated with politics. Like a huge number of French in the last presidential election did not even vote in the second round. They spoiled their ballots or they just didn't show up. Right. Like they didn't really like Macron and they didn't like um, Le Pen. And I think that that's part of the reason why a lot of French are looking elsewhere. You know, they're looking out to other forms of, of thinking and being. Um, and I think that, you know, what the French have done is with the topic of race is probably, I would say, probably been mostly successful. I would say that if you're an underprivileged person in France, you probably are better off than an underprivileged person in the United States, no matter what your, your skin color is. But I do think that they've insisted uh, at times on kind of creating a monoculture or a uniculture, um, which isn't entirely tenable if they're going to be a country that has relatively open borders, that takes in immigrants, that's going to be more religiously diverse, right? Like Fra France, for instance, is a famously secular society, right? It's a Nominally, they have a lot of Catholics, but they're not very religious and most of mm. them are not very pious. And having a substantial and growing Muslim population, uh, you know, one reaction to that is the Le Pen reaction, which is to say we should just cut it off or drastically reduce it. Uh, we should be suppressing uh, religion in the public square. We shouldn't let women wear headscarves in schools or in the parliament, uh, their parliament. But the other reaction would be actually just to accept that, like, your country can change over time. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, to have a little bit of multiculturalism in your country, right? If you try to uh, enforce it from the top, you know, you may, you may end up getting a backlash which takes the form of Le Penism, or it may end up getting a backlash which takes the form of uh, what's happening in some of this uh, woke language where people are kind of self-segregating on categories which they traditionally haven't used in France before. Yeah, really fascinating there, Zed. Thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up, author Ryan Gerdusky is going to give us an update on where the Lincoln Project stands. That's when Rising continues.